What I'd like to demonstrate to you today is one of our identity and access management patterns for mobile security. In particular, this pattern is for hybrid applications. Demonstrations split into two phases. The first is a registration phase. It's a very fast and simple user experience. It allows us to establish on the, on the device a credential that represents the user's account, allows the application to log in as that user. But at no time will you ever see me enter my account username and password on that device. It's separately revocable from the user's real credentials and provides very fast application launch as that user. There's also a, attached to this particular application a risk-based access policy. This risk-based access policy requires a user to provide a second factor strong authentication under certain conditions. And the two conditions that you'll see me apply second factor authentication to are firstly when the user launches the application for the very first time after registration. And secondly, if they re-enter the application and try to execute a transaction which is deemed, in our case, of high value. That's the particular context that I've applied in this demonstration. But the context can be based on any variety of data available in the, in the mobile world. For example, it might be based on geolocation, um, behavioral data that's been tracked for the user, uh, access at a weird time of day, any, anything that can be gathered or discovered from the context of the current transaction. This demonstration is also available in the Expo Hall, and I can go into a lot more detail about it there. So let's switch now to the demonstration itself. On the right-hand side here, I'm using a standard browser where I've authenticated to my company's portal, and I have the ability to register a new mobile device. On the left-hand side, you can see the application itself as displayed on my phone. On the left-hand side, I'll go ahead and click the register button. Here I have the ability to enter or scan in an authorization code. On the right hand side, I'll choose to register a new instance and approve that registration. Simply by pressing the scan QR code button on the registration page, which essentially, essentially copies and pastes the registration code into the app, and pressing OK, my application is registered. It is now identity aware and I can launch the demo as my user account. Now, the very first time I loaded the risk protected page for this application, you'll see I'm prompted to do a second factor authentication. This is because a risk based policy has been applied to this particular scenario. Now, the types of strong authentication we can support are completely extensible. And in this particular environment, I've configured email and SMS delivery, as well as integration with HMAC authenticators such as the Google Authenticator, which I'll use here. To get my Google Authenticator code, I'll just switch to the Google Authenticator application, pick up the current code, which is 228916, re-enter that on the mobile device. Step up authentication will complete, and I'll be authenticated to the application. Now, I'm going to exit the application and relaunch it. And this time you'll see I'll, I'll be able to go straight to the risk-based access page without requiring step up authentication. From here, I can perform a series of transactions. The simple policy applied to this application shows low or high value transactions. We've applied a policy that says if the, the value selected is high and your current authenticated session has not been stepped up to strong authentication, and that is required for that transaction to complete. So here you'll see me prompted for step up authentication again. Once I've completed a step up authentication flow, this time 000327. Session is raised to a higher level of authentication. You can see it displayed at the, on the screen there is three, and high value and low value transactions can both complete without further prompting of the, of the user for uh, strong authentication for that session. The application can be revoked individually on the management page on the server without the users having to uh, 
reset their password or delete the application from any other devices where they may have it installed. If the user does disable the application and tries to relaunch it, that of course will fail. This helps us account for the lost or stolen device counts. That's all I wanted to show you here today. Please come down to the Expo Hall. I'm going to the demo in a lot more detail and show you the ins and outs of how it works.